So let's start today, and today we are going to discuss uh, about uh, the um, assignment. So let's look again at the assignment, and uh, and let's see uh, how it works. So basically, what I want is that you download a library and you write uh, a simulation model and then some simulation using this library so the library is called uh, metasim and this library has been developed over several years by several people as a basic uh, library to implement discrete event simulation okay so you find uh, the library at this address is gtab Glipari Metasim. GitHub or GitHub is uh, a repository which uses uh, a program called Git. Git is a program for doing a versioning control of software. Okay, so maybe you have already heard of programs like CVS, which is uh, con. Uh, control if I remember where is control of versioning system or there is another one which is called the subversion or SVN which is an evolution of CVS there are many others mercurial uh, and uh, bazaar and so on but one of the most popular right now is JIT or git okay so git is uh, quite powerful and uh, but at the same time not so uh, not too difficult to use okay so if you want to download the library what you have to do is to use uh, one of these commands for example you can use the you will be allowed to use the git read only okay so you have to copy this and uh, you go into a directory of your choice and you write the command git clone and then the repository sorry Okay, on a command line. And this will produce a directory, metasim, containing all that you need for compiling the library and your programs. Just a minute, for some reason it's uh, taking more time than expected. <laughs> try again we'll try the HTTP version okay let's see if it works better yes also the other one should work but uh, for some reason uh, was not compatible so you have a directory metasim and inside you will find the software and now we are going to see in a little while how to do that another way to download the software is that you go here and you extract a zip file and this will be downloaded in any place and you can uh, un unpack it and uh, start compiling it okay so okay so this is the way to download the software for compiling the software under linux or under cgwin so i i suggest you to you, you work under linux but if you want you can also work under windows by using uh, oh, sorry by using this uh, um,
the software which basically gives you a, a Linux terminal inside Windows and all the tools that you need so once you download Shigwin from within Shigwin you can select the compiler you can select uh, uh, the editor you can select whatever you want and you can use it very easily uh, if you don't want to use a Sequin and if you don't want to use Linux, you can still use my library. However, you have to create uh, uh, a way to compile it, okay? Because uh, the compilation system is based on the configure, make, make, install. Uh, so auto make, auto conf uh, of Linux. And you don't have these things in uh, in Windows usually. So basically, uh, you can still do that, but you have to create your own project. For example, if you use so Visual Basic, you have to create your own project, put inside the project all the files inside directory source, and uh, try to compile that. Okay? Uh, there is some file which I forgot to eliminate. Uh, which you will see have this uh, symbol at the end of the file that is basically copies that my editor Emacs is making of the files so you can completely ignore that because these are copies okay I just did the import in GTAB and I forget to remove uh, these files okay so you go inside the metasim and uh, how do you do compile that? So let's write here how you are going to use. So we are going to use JIT. So you have to go to, to write JIT, clone, and then address from GitHub. Okay? And this will create your directory. Then you go inside the directory. And inside the directory, you have to uh, run this command. It's called auto reconf. This will basically create uh, all Mac files, okay, and configure the system. After auto reconf, you do this command configure. Actually, this creates all Mac files dot in and configure instead will create all Mac files. Okay, and finally, after you do that, from now on, you can compile by using make. Okay make will create uh, a, a library file inside the source and will compile the examples If you want, you can also compile the tests. But for compiling the test, you need the Google test library. Okay? So let's go into a directory which I already configured. And uh, for compiling the test library, you need to be in a directory in which you also have gtest. Okay? So you need a directory gtest at the same level as Metasim. And inside Metasim, inside uh, the readme I just provide you with uh, instructions on how to do that so if you go and look at uh, the um, so at the instruction for compiling uh, you will see that what you have to do is uh, if you have uh, a directory metasim at this level, the same level you have to have a directory gtest which contains a version of gtest after or not before 1.6 with all its own tree. And you don't even need to compile the gtest library. Okay, you just unpack it without compiling. Once you unpack it, 
you go inside metasim and you write make check and this will compile and run all tests okay okay so let's do that so I'm going for so if you are on uh, systems like uh, Ubuntu or Debian you maybe need to download some extra package so one extra package you need would be the automake or autoconf okay usually Debian and um, uh, Ubuntu they have uh, a package called auto tools so for example on Ubuntu you need to write sudo apt get install Okay, and you have all the libraries that are needed for compiling, configuring, and running Metasim. Okay, I will uh, tell you how to use that in, a, in, a, in the rest of the lecture. So let's try to do this procedure. I here I do auto reconf. Okay, then configure. And make. Since I am on a multi core processor, I just give make J8, which will be much faster because it runs all the compilation in parallel and everything has been done. Now uh, I can test it. This compiles all the tests and runs it. Okay, so now all the tests uh, have run okay, so everything is okay. Okay, what is that you find inside source? You find all the file compiled, and also you will find a file that is called libmetasim dot la which is the library that has been produced by our compilation okay when you want to write your own program you have to link against this library okay then inside directory examples you will find the three different examples uh, a simple mmq mm1q uh, from network uh, theory, then a Markov chain, and then uh, a very simple and straightforward uh, modeling of uh, the Ethernet uh, uh, protocol, the old one, the one in which packets could collide on a common line, okay? So we have these three examples, and now we are going to analyze the following. If you want to compile the documentation, for the library, you need another program which is called uh, Doxygen. Doxygen again can be compiled by going uh, like this. Okay, and once you compile it, you can run it by using command doxygen. In the metasim directory, and Oxygen will produce uh, all the HTML uh, documentation. In 
inside directory doc HTML. Okay, so now let's look at how it works. Okay, documentation has been generated. You go inside doc, there is a directory HTML, and you go inside HTML, and there are a lot of HTML files. Uh, we are going to open index.html and here we go metasim documentation uh, there are a few modules but what is important are the classes so here are the basic classes inside metasim okay and we are going to have a look at that so you can go for example and analyze uh, one of the most important classes is entity and you see there is uh, a description of the class plus all the public member functions, the static public member function, a little bit of description about the class and uh, documentation about each single uh, function. Okay. What is nice is that uh, if you click on it, you can actually look at the CPP file that implements this class. Okay. Okay. Now let's stop for a while looking at the library and let's see uh, what do we mean by discrete Im event simulation. So in discrete event simulation, okay, the evolution of the system is uh, uh, identified by a sequence of discrete events. So basically over the time, we are going to have the occurrence of several events. which can be a various distance one from the other. They could also be coincident, so happen at the same time. Okay, and every event is basically an action that is performed on the system. So the system is a set of entities okay which evolve in discrete steps in correspondence of specific events okay so the two important things to be seen here are entities and the events okay so what is an event an event is basically an action that happens at a specific point in time It is instantaneous, takes zero time, okay, and modifies the states of one or more objects. Okay. Uh, okay, so I use the word entity as a sort of uh, um, alias uh, of uh, object. The difference I use in my library, 
between entity and object is that entities respond to events so they basically are influenced by events while objects in general do not have this uh, strict relationship with events so uh, let's say second level uh, kind of uh, things okay so the two important things are entities and events okay so what is an entity as i said is a sort of object you can see like an object uh, which uh, uh, an object with an interface which consists of uh, regular methods and methods that can be called by events okay also my entities have a name and a global ID okay and they are registered in a sort of a global map of entities so that can I can obtain the address of an entity just by his name and vice versa okay uh, then what is an event? It's again an object with a precise interface okay and this object uh, is usually uh, can be active or not active I would say pending rather than active. Pending. When an event is pending, it means that it's waiting to be processed. Okay. When an object is pending, it stays inside a queue of events. So, um, I said that uh, an event is pending when it is waiting to be processed at a certain time, okay, T, which is the processing time, okay, and also it is inside a global queue of events, uh, and this global queue of events is ordered by increasing processing time. So I have a global queue of event uh, which is implemented inside the library and this global queue of events is ordered by processing time and uh, basically the simulation consists in looking at the queue, taking the first event of the queue and processing it and then taking the second event of the queue and processing it and so on and so forth. What does it mean to process an event? Well, an event, uh, it's usually connected to an entity, and in particular to a, uh, the method. So when the event is processed, it will uh, basically call a method of uh, the corresponding entity okay so basically again what happens is that the simulator goes in the queue looks at the first event in the queue and process it processing means 
go inside the entity in a specific method and execute that code. And then the event has been processed, is not pending anymore, and so we go at the next event and we process the next event. And then again, a new entity method will be called and it will be processed, and so on and so forth. Okay? So you have this global queue of events. Okay? The current time of the simulation is the time of the current event. The event has been processed at uh, this point. In fact, as I said, uh, the simulation uh, is discrete. Discrete means that nothing happens between two events. If you have an event EI that happens at time TI, and then uh, let's call it event A, and then you have event B which happens at time TI plus one, Nothing happens here. Okay? So the only processing happens at this point and at this point. Okay? So the current time of the simulation is the time of the, pro the event that is being processed at this time. So basically, if we are processing this, this is the current time. Okay, again, the event is discrete. So if you have to, for example, simulate something that happens in uh, uh, continuous time, what you have to do is to have an equation that is going to describe uh, what is going on in time and update the values of the variables according to the equation in discrete events in these discrete steps. So you can still model approximately what happens in continuous time, but you have to do that by using appropriate functions and equations, okay? Because the simulation is going to be discrete, okay? Now, let's first look at how to use the library, and then we are going to see how uh, the library works. And to do that, we are going uh, to analyze one example, and in particular, the simplest example is the one that represents a queue. So what is a queue? Let's see what is a queue. Okay, so basically what we want to do is to model a queue with a server. And, uh, for example, this could be the incoming queue of a network uh, uh, server, okay? So here you have packets of work to be done, which arrive. And these uh, arrive with a certain uh, probability distribution of inter-arrival time. So for example, if the first packet arrives at time t, okay, the next packet is going to arrive at time t plus a certain uh, uh, 
uh, random number which has a distribution Okay, so for example, we are going to model exponential distribution here, or Poisson, okay? So we are going to model Poisson arrivals. Okay, and then the server. Every time the server is always ready, and process packets once, one at a time. And the time it takes to process one packet is also a distribution. And we are going to use exponential distribution. Okay, so we have distri exponential distribution of arrival times of packets and exponential distribution of service time by the server. Okay, this model is called M M1. M because stands for memoryless, because uh, uh, the exponential distribution is a memoryless distribution. And uh, M again stands for memoryless because the distribution of the service time is memoryless. And one means that we only have uh, one server. Okay? One queue, one server. Okay. There is a, a closed form solution of uh, this. Uh, and basically, we say that if the PDF of the distribution is exponential with average arrival time equal to lambda and if the distribution of the service time is exponential with average mu then uh, we can compute the average length of the queue so the average number of packets in the queue as a function of lambda and mu and we can compute the average waiting time as a function of lambda and mu and this is a closed form okay now we are not interested too much in the mathematics here we are only interested in understanding how we can model this system so remember that we have a queue a server and packets incoming okay okay now let's see how we can do that um, the actual uh, uh, implementation is done in another file. This is the main file that is used for running the, the, the simulation. And so let's see what we are going to do. First of all, I define lambda and mu, which are two variables which I ask to the user. I to the user, I ask to insert lambda. And then I ask to insert mu and lambda must be less than mu otherwise the it's unstable in the sense that it does not converge to an average but the length of the queue continues to uh, uh, grow and grow larger and larger okay uh, so sorry lambda is actually the service time so i have to, to do the other way around so this is mu And this is lambda okay and we ask that lambda is less than mu if lambda is greater or equal to mu we exit from the program because we cannot solve it okay and we are going to define uh, two objects the first one is called uh, st and is an exponential var Exponential var is a class provided by the simulator which models a random variable with exponential distribution and uh, lambda is the parameter. 
and AT is uh, the arrival time, the arrival distribution, and it's again an exponential variable with uh, average mu. Then I define the entities that compose my system. I have a sink, which is basically an object here. Then I have my queue, which is all of this, server plus queue. And then I have a source, which is the one that generates the packets. So the source is here. OK? And uh, I connect them by using the uh, constructor. So the sync has no nothing to, to connect to. Then I have the queue that needs uh, uh, a sync which is where the packet is going uh, after it's been processed and uh, ST is the service time for serving the packet and finally source needs a destination to understand where the packet is going and then uh, it needs uh, a arrival time which is the generation the, the way it generates packets Okay. I also give names to this. So this is called sync, this is called queue, and this is called source. And usually in a simulation, I want to compute statistics. So I'm going uh, to compute statistics using a specific classes. So average queue site stat is a statistic that I created in this simulation. And this is an object statistic. And I give it a queue and a name. And then I, I tell... Uh, that I want to uh, also attach this to the source. So every time a packet is generated, I'm going to measure something. Then I set a parameter of the, the statistic, which is the transitory time. I'm going to explain to you what does it mean. And uh, I set a few debug information. And finally, I'm ready to run the simulation. I'm going to run the simulation eight times, so eight different simulations. And every one of this run is going to last for so much. So I think it's two millions, right? Okay, after that, after the simulation has been run for eight times, I take the mean average uh, size in the confidence interval at uh, 95 uh, percentage uh, of this uh, um, statistic. So let's try to run and see what happens. Okay, I just put 0 0.4 and 0 0.8. And now the simulation is running. So I have several runs of this simulation every time I collect statistics and then I do the, the, the final statistic by combining the statistics of every run. And it's almost finished. Okay, so the average queue length is basically almost one. And uh, the confidence interval is very low. Okay. So everything works, okay. Uh, let's now look at how I did this. So basically these three objects. So as in a, in a first of all, let's model um, the cube, okay? So what I have is uh, um, the definition of a node which represents a generic node in the system which has a lot of virtual functions. Then I have the definition of sync which derives from node. The definition of source again derives from node. And finally I have uh, the definition of Q, which also derives from node. OK? 
okay and, uh, and finally I have the statistics let me delete this okay so let's look at node so node derives from entity entity is a class provided by our library let's have a look at it so entity has uh, the following uh, public member functions it has a constructor which just takes a string a destructor of course a get ID which returns the entity ID a get name which returns the name and then two virtual functions new run and end run these two functions are called every time a run is about to start and just after a run has terminated okay so you can specialize new run and end run for each different entity it also has a static member functions get pointer returns a certain pointer by knowing the ID of the entity and find returns an entity given its name then two functions call, call new run and end run this call new run will call all for every entity in the system the new run for that entity and call and run we call and run for every entity in the system so basically what happens is that every time you create an entity an entity is stored inside a, a internal data structure a map which makes a correspondence between a name and pointer of the entity so that you can find the entity by pointer or by uh, id okay uh, and not much else so basically entity is a very same simple uh, class um, okay so I ask whoever derives from entity to implement new run and then run and then we are also going to implement a print function okay which in this case is not necessary but in general can be so this tree derives from entity uh, this one instead is something that I'm adding here so it's specific for node it is called put and the idea of put is to insert a packet into this node so basically another entity will call put to insert a packet into this node okay okay so then let's see uh, the three classes that derive from node sync, source and queue so a sync is very simple it contains just a simple uh, integer which counts the number of cons consumed packets initially consumed is zero every time I call put consumed is incremented every time I reinitialize the simulation consumed is set equal to zero and that's it there is nothing else I, I need to, to, to do about that so this is a very very simple entity then source source is the one that generates packets so it will contain a pointer to a random variable and a pointer to a destination node okay internally also contains what is called an event Okay, we will come back to event in a little while. First of all, let's continue analyzing the source. So it contains an event, as I said. This is the constructor. Okay. Uh, since this is a source, I cannot put anything inside the source, so put does nothing. Okay then produce this is the main function produce is called every time I need to produce an event and this a, a packet and it's called directly from the event so the event is the one that will call produce 
and what that it does is to put a new packet into the destination and then take this event and post it to a future time. So before going on, let's look at this event more in detail. So class produce event derives from event, a specialized class event. So let's look at class event now. So here it is shown also a derivation a, a diagram. So basically event is also the base class of this other class, which is a template we will explain after. And there are also other two classes, compare and X. The first one is for comparing events and uh, the last one is for uh, the exceptions. Uh, an event uh, uh, can have a priority and this priority is used to solve uh, uh, the order of events when you have two events at the same time. As I said, it can happen that I have uh, two events at the same time. Like here, E6 uh, e and E7 are at the same time. So which one do I am going to uh, uh, to do first, well, uh, I can solve this uh, by using the priority. So each event has a priority, the event with the highest priority comes first. Okay. Then I have uh, two important functions. This is post, process, and drop. Actually, three important functions. So post means uh, take this event and put that into the queue with this processing time, my time. Okay. The second boolean is uh, to understand if this is the disposable event or not. Disposable event means after this event has been consumed, please delete the object with a delete. If it disposable instead is true, it, uh, is false, uh, then uh, of course it's not deleted. Okay. So post means, okay, let's process the event in the future at this time. If uh, I try to post an event in the past, then an exception is thrown. Process instead means process the uh, event immediately at this specific time. So post puts that into the queue. Process instead executes it immediately. Finally, drop cancel the events. So if the event is in the queue, drop will remove it from the queue. As I said, I have a get priority, set priority, restore priority. This is for changing the priority of an event. I can ask if it is disposable. I can ask about its time and the last time it was posted. I can add a statistic using add particle and add statistic. I can add a trace, we'll see later. Then I have internal function, action, do it and print, which are basically the action that I want to specify in my system. And in particular, do it is the function that is, been, is supposed to be overloaded by your own event. So when you define an event, you basically have to write something into the do it event which is what happens when the uh, event is processed. Okay? And print is just for debugging. This will print uh, the information, some information about the event. So let's go back at our uh, uh, class produce event. A class produce event wants the address of source and uh, I'm going to create an event by initializing the basic constructor and uh, the source. And whenever the event is processed, it basically calls produce of source. 
So basically, every time the event is uh, processed, this function is going to be called. And when the event is processed, so the first time is uh, uh, an event of type produce event is posted at time at get. At, I remind you, is the arrival, uh, it's the random variable for the arrival time. Okay? So this will randomly select a number according to the distribution and uh, I'm going to post at this time uh, the event produce event. When the event is processed I call put into the destination and the uh, post is going uh, to be uh, the uh, produce, producing uh, the produce event is going to be posted again at the current time plus a random variable. Okay, so basically this event reposts itself after so much time. So this is quite simple. Uh, this is another uh, class instead that uh, simulates the queue. So I'm going uh, I'm going to describe this very quickly. So basically node is the destination node which we are going to uh, send the packet after it has been serviced. This is the queue, is a FIFO queue and this is the service time. I have another event inside which is basically service event which every time it's processed is going to call serve of this queue. Okay. Queue as a constructor in which I initialize basically all the internal members. Then I have a function put which insert an element into the queue. If after the insertion the size of the queue is 1 it means that that's the first packet has been in arriving and then I post a service event at time st.get uh, in the service I pop the packet from the queue if the size of the queue is 0 then it's different from zero, then I repost the service event because I'm going to process the next one. Otherwise, I don't post anything because there is nothing to serve when the queue is zero. And finally, I post this into the destination. Okay? Get sides will return the sides of the queue, new run, and run print. Finally, the statistic. How does it work? So the statistic works like this. So I have a hierarchy of statistics, which is a base stat is the base class. Then I have intermediate classes that are called the stat count stat max, stat mean, stat mean, stat percent, stat uh, square mean. And they calculate statistic on this specific base stat. Okay? So they specialize on the statistics. <coughs> and then you need to derive from one of them uh, to understand uh, what you are going to measure. So base stat has uh, one important function which is called record, which is called every time I want to record a statistic. Then I have an event which is called, it's a function which is called probe and uh, attach if I want to attach something to an entity. Okay? The basic idea is that uh, the function probe which is going to record the event, uh, which is going to call record basically, is called every time a certain event is processed. So the event, when the event is processed, just uh, after processing the function the basic function for the event, probe is called. And this probe will in itself call record. Okay? Uh, and internally this statistic will be collected. 
So basically, I'm going to uh, specialize average Q side stat is going to be stat mean because I'm going to uh, call the the average statistic and I need a Q on which I want to compute the average sides and this is the technique I use for uh, uh, for connecting a certain uh, event to a certain statistic okay so the basic idea is that when I uh, initialize everything I create this function this uh, object which connects a certain um, a certain uh, event to this sp specific uh, statistic when the event is processed I'm going to call probe and probe is going to call q get sides sorry minus one because basically this is being called just after the packet has arrived and so if I want to calculate the mean of the sides I have to compute Q get sides minus one okay this is all that is needed to know now if we go back to the main we will see that this is quite generic in the sense that for example I could uh, modify slightly this program to have uh, a uh, network of um, of uh, queues for example is not too difficult to implement uh, a complex structure like this in which we are going to have uh, a queue here and then maybe two queues here Okay, this can be done immediately without changing anything because I just need to create two sources that and two uh, uh, queues and connect them in this way. Okay. Also, um, in this case, I just use the exponential variables, but I can use any kind of variable. Metasim makes available many different distributions. So basically, if we go into the um, random variables module, you are going to have uh, delta, which is basically a, a, a single number. Okay, so it's uh, a sort of generalization of a random number in the sense that whichever is the random number is going to be extracted always the same number is going to be produced then you have uniform which is basically uniform distribution exponential distribution Pareto normal is the Gaussian distribution Poisson and deterministic instead requires a file so you can generate once and for all a sequence of values then give this file to that var and that var is going to uh, read the numbers in sequence from the file and produce it once after the other one after the other okay so you have a lot of this uh, okay the code uh, of the library is quite simple so you can go and look at it um, okay so I'm going to stop here right now so we are just uh, having uh, 10 minutes of break and then we will uh, continue analyzing a little bit the library again okay let's do a break